Hello everybody, Cubase 13 is out. Yes, a whole digit upgrade to our favorite uh, digital audio workstation. I'm gonna be taking you through the new features. I'm gonna be comparing it with Cubase 12 so that you can see what you get when you upgrade. But I'm gonna be doing it in a very specific way because I've written a little song in Cubase 12 and we're gonna be transferring it into Cubase 13 so you can see side by side what the difference is. But I have this warning. Sunglasses of doubt. It's the worst song you've ever heard. It's even worse than the Birdie song. That's a really cruel thing to say to anybody because anybody who doesn't know the Birdie song is now going to go away and look it up. And once you've heard it, you're never going to be able to unhear it. I'm really sorry about that. So let us get stuck in with Cubase 13. Welcome to Cubase 13. Welcome to my shed. Let's see what's new and different. Or should I stay in bed? It's a whole digit upgrade. A whole digit day. It's a whole digit upgrade. And it's coming your way. Told you it was bad. Right. <sighs> for a long lie down now. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to <laughs> look at that song. <laughs> These are the sunglasses of confidence. At graduation for our master's degrees uh, the other week, um, a student came up to me and gave these to me as a present because he came in with the sunglasses of doubt and went out with the sunglasses of confidence. Very good. Right, um, oh, let's get stuck in and have a look at Cubase 13. Right, here is the sequence. I mean, there's some subtle differences to the actual layout of the, um, of, of the arrange page and all that kind of thing. The most significant upgrade, probably, is a little button tucked away on the top corner here. Do you see you've got left hand uh, zone, uh, lower zone, right hand zone, and an extra zone. Stand by for action when I show you this. You're going to fall on the floor with shock. <gasps> yeah, what you get is a mixer channel down the left hand side. This is actually very, very useful. Um, if particularly if you're a laptop user where you don't have multiple um, monitors, you know, you're trying to swap between the, the mixer channel and the, oh, oh, it's a bit much. This is very useful. I think it's a feature which comes from um, uh, Reaper, actually. I think they've got that going already. Um, but it is really good because it mean, you can see things like um, inserts and sends and all that kind of thing in one thing without. If you did the bottom zone, uh, there we go, mix console, you have to sort of swap through them like this and it's not quite so convenient. So this is a good thing. So you can go through and each one of these you can see. Um, so that is uh, quite a significant change. Um, the next thing in their little document, which they send out, hang on, warm, here's the document which we get sent. Uh, new features guide. So it's a, a girl saying, God, he really is a shocking bass player, isn't he? And he's thinking to himself, I hope she doesn't realise I'm a shocking bass player. Um, so if we flip down, obviously the uh, new mixer channel tab is um, top of their list. Next up, slick, streamlined and focused, a new look to the mixer. Okay, well, let's have a look. Um, let's get up the uh, Cubase 12 mixer. Okay, there's the Cubase 12 mixer in all its glory. Let's have a look at the Cubase 13 mixer. Well, it's different. Um, it's not, I honestly don't think looking at that is going to make my mixes any better. They've re, you can see things have been reorganized a bit. I mean, um, in terms of uh, where the pan goes and all that kind of thing. And these are slightly easier to use. The one thing I really, I do quite like about this is we've now got, oh, can you see it? No, you can't see it, Never mind. Um, there is a little edit instrument button on the bottom. So you can edit the instrument straight from um, the mixer, which is a nice touch and will save people messing about a lot. Um, let's have a look at another feature. Um, what have they got? What's next on their list? Okay, this is quite cool as well. The range tool. There's a number of editor uh, upgrades here. So if we go into um, this one, 
there is now um, a tool, here we go, range selection. I'm not sure if you can see that, if that's close enough. Here we go, let's um, just drag it up, see if I can drag it up some more. No, can't, never mind. Okay, range selection, there we go. What this allows you to do is rather than just select these notes, if you've got stuff going on top and bottom, you can select just that bit. And in other words, all the notes on the top, which are out of range, Okay, shall I find something which is a bit of a better explain? Here we go. Okay, like this. So rather than just selecting those, it selects the whole lot. That is quite useful and um, is a welcome addition to the armory. There's also this thing about editing multiple parts. Um, and what this essentially means is um, if you select, say, for, uh, uh, if you go in here, you can select by turning things off and on in the uh, visibility tab, which of the instruments crops up in here. So although you've always been able to edit more than one part at a time by selecting them like that, if you've got a really big arrangement, that is a bit of a faff and it's not gonna work for you particularly well. Whereas this will allow you to edit um, all of them. I think that's how it works. I should say that, you know, I'm working off the new features guide um, because I've had it um, Cubase 13 for, uh, for a month or so, not the manual. So um, a lot of these things may become more clear when we actually get into the manual. Now, this is why I subjected you to that ghastly song. The ultimate vocal chain, vocal processing is an art in its own. Yes, one I don't have. Taking a lot of expertise and experience to master the different processing steps, the Vocal Chain plugin provides dedicated modules for each step, helping you turn your recordings into professional sounding vocal tracks. It's going to take more than the plugin to turn my vocals into professional sounding vocal tracks. I can tell you that for now. Um, right, so here we are. Let's use our new channel tab and put the Vocal Chain on it. Uh, vocal. There we go, vocal chain, up you come, thanks very much. And here you go, this is what you get. Um, so you've got uh, everything a vocal person, a vocal processing person could possibly want. Uh, cut filter, gate, um, pitch correction, DS, uh, dynamic filter, compressor, EQ, exciter, saturator, uh, compressor, two dynamic filter, two EQ, two DS, two imager, delay and reverb. There you go, I told you everything you could possibly want. Um, now, but can it do anything to save my vocals? Here we go, so. Welcome to Cubase 13. Welcome to my shed. Let's see what's new and different. It's a whole digit upgrade. That's better. <laughs> a whole digit day. It's a whole digit upgrade. Oh, you can do the whole thing. And it's coming your way. Okay, so you can do the whole kind of robotic voice Welcome thing. to Cubase 13. Welcome to my shed. Let's see what's new and different. Oh, dynamic filter, let's have one of them. It's a whole digit upgrade. Okay, so you can see what you've got. You've got a lot of stuff in there. You've got delays, you've got reverbs, and then with a whole load of presets from uh, the useful to the completely bonkers. Um, so if you're a song producer, um, this is Steinberg reaching out to you and saying, are you interested in me? Um, so uh, have a look. And if we go back, there she is sitting there. And she's given up. She's sacked the bassist. She's decided to do the vocals herself. He was useless. Got rid of him. Okay, fair enough. Progress your progressions. Uh, new chord pads, it makes it easier to find. Okay. Now, this is actually an example of Cubase's slight identity crisis because the vast majority of people in Cubase, uh, Cubase is not their first door. They've had another one first. Um, it's, Cubase is huge in the film and television and games community. It's the biggest single door, I think, just beating uh, Logic. But in the great world, which includes songwriting things, Logic has got more uh, users and... Uh, FL Studio and Ableton Live are the biggest. So um, Cubase has, over the course of time, been making more inroads towards um, um, the uh, beginners, for example, and so chord pads is definitely, this is, so you play one pad and it uh, plays a whole chord type thing to you. That's, uh, that's the gist. Um, exactly how it's improved, I don't know, because um, it's not something I use very much 
actually read at all but there you go i mean it's you know this is the thing this is actually the thing about the upgrade in general that if they change one thing which is something you use all the time then this is the best upgrade ever and if they change a hundred things none of which you use then mm, okay this is how most of you will be going about looking at this okay i would imagine okay now uh, one thing which i was uh, pleasantly surprised by they talk about they they've in, given you a free library um uh Let's put uh, Halion in, uh, which is their sampler. Halion, Halion, Why is it not there? Uh, why can't I find it? Just before I go any further, um, we do a lot of courses at Thinkspace Education to help people become more fulfilled and satisfied as um, composers. And we even go right the way up to full master's courses, um, which are all focused on helping you uh, into a new career, whether that's as a sound designer for games, um, video game composer, composer for film and television, songwriter, music producer, any of those things. Please go and check us out at thinkspaceeducation.com and uh, you'll see a whole world of education which is just waiting at your feet. Right, let's get back into this. Oh, no, I know what I need to do. Sorry, sorry, that was me being stupid. Okay, right, Halion Sonic, let's put a Halion track in. Okay, here it is. Let's uh, hit the uh, edit button, which is moved very slightly, which is slightly, you know, okay. Okay, factory, iconic sketch. Actually, if you look at this, what you're getting is a whole sort of library. You're getting a whole orchestral library. I mean, it's not a, it's not by any means just a sketchy thing. Look, you've got bass clarinet, you've got bass clarinet, which you don't get in um, uh, BBC Symphony Orchestra Core. Uh, so you have indeed a complete uh, orchestra library here, which is quite cool, and um, it doesn't sound half bad actually. Um, oh, where's it gone? Ah, try deep. It's fine. Oh. That was Cubase 12 having a hissy fit. <laughs> That's Cubase 13, 12 saying, you like 13 more than me? Um, I will crash on you. There you go. Right. Don't get on the wrong side of Cubase 12. Right. Okay. So I may well return to Iconic and, and write a bit of music because uh, that is it looks quite cool uh, right the sampler track has had uh, a bit of a facelift um, this is one of these ones where uh, there it is um, I could really do with the manual I really really could do with a proper full manual to let me know what's going on uh, okay so if we just drag in a sample um, there, there is the sample now there is a whole load of extra stuff you can do um, and exactly how it works uh, well, no, it does. Anyway, let's turn that on. Go to modulation. You can you can modulate things in a way which you couldn't do in. You can, in other words, there's a lot more um, stuff going on. So, I mean, a lot of this was there in Cubase 12, but ah, but I can't show you Cubase 12 because it's gone off and had a hissy fit. But you can now do a lot more um, manipulation of these things. Um, drawing envelopes and all that kind of stuff. So the sampler track becomes ever more powerful as a sound design tool, which is very, very welcome. Um, so if I knew how to do it, this is what you could do. <laughs> so yeah, you could make it go and all that kind of stuff, um, which is very welcome indeed. Um, there's other stuff. Look, there's lots of plugins, uh, new plugins. There's a vocoder, there's compression, there's an equalizer, there's a compression for vocals or whatever. Um, this again comes back to the question of, if you're the kind of peer person who's already been at this for a while, you've probably got billions of plugins. And so the included plugins are less important to you uh, than what's actually built into the, you know, the functionality. Likewise, the sounds, you know, if you're already using orchestral tools, VSL, Spitfire or something. Um, the Halion stuff is not going to, you know, rock your boat particularly. Um, on the other hand, if you are um, starting from scratch person or you haven't got all those things, then all these extra plugins and libraries are going to be very useful. So this is once again an example of uh, how it's horses for courses. Yeah. Uh, so other smaller improvements. Uh, 
the uh, step and MIDI input has had a, um, a, a bit of a facelift. Um, there's the key editor now, uh, MIDI CCs can now be recorded. Oh, this is quite cool. Okay, so look, um, if I go into a track, this is a very simple one to illustrate. Um, I will just, I'm just gonna record in this bass line here, a simple and utter, utterly um, pointless. Uh, Welcome to Cubase 13. Welcome to, here we go. Right, now if we go in there, I'll just put some um, mod wheel in just so you can see what goes on. Uh, now you see what it's done. It's put in the minimum number of uh, points. Um, that wasn't probably the best in Oh yeah, because no, Norman, under the, in the old version, it would have gone, there would have been about 68 points in between that one and that one. But it's simplified it, so it makes it much easier to edit if you're going to use the object selection tool. There we go. So if you wanted to do that, for example, look, you can start pulling things around. Whereas in Cubase 12, you'd have had sort of, it would be like the night sky of stars. And so you couldn't do that. So that is a... Uh, uh, for people who pull about their controllers, and that should be you because that's how you get things to sound great. Um, it's really good. There's also some transport differences so that you can now decide more where it starts each time. Um, there's, uh, what's this, tap tempo. I don't tend to use that. Quick change channel, change channel type. Oh, monitor stereo. That was a, that was a bugbear of quite a lot of people. Um, oh, the key command editor has changed as well. Um, which is now more, and I think this is good because this is key commands are an absolute vital part. Oh God, I've been using, because I've been using um, Logic recently as well, I get confused. Um, there are more powerful features in here in order to be able to uh, find and change things. And you've got, uh, so this is, a, this is a welcome upgrade as well. So look, you can see the way this is going. That there's, this is, um, uh, um, more of an evolutionary um, upgrade than a revolutionary one. Um, it's, um, there's no really huge big ticket item here. Um, you know, with 12, I think, it was that the one when we lost the dongle, which was big news for anybody working on a laptop or whatever, that was really, uh, oh yeah, thank God for that. Um, so these are all sort of more nuanced enhancements. Um, if you're on Cubase 10 or 11, um, then there will now be a bigger leap than there ever was before. So it may well be a more worthwhile upgrade. If you're on 12 and you work with vocals or any of these things make you go, thank heaven for that, then off you go. Um, but, you know, in my day to day, I haven't noticed a huge difference. I quite like having the channel thing down the side, um, but I will, I'm sure I will get more into this, and particularly once I'm able to really dig into the manual and see what in more detail what's gone on, then it will become uh, clearer what's what. Anyway, look, I um, hope you found that useful as a first look. Um, you'll be seeing more of Cubase 13 on the channel, obviously, as I go on write stuff and do stuff and the way I do. What can I tell you? Um, if you've enjoyed this, go and check us out at thinkspaceeducation.com, where you'll find all kinds of thrilling courses to help you become a better musician. Yes, you, I'm talking to you. See you again very soon.